All right. In this video, we're going to take a look at probability. And quite simply, probability is just the chance of an event occurring. And we hear about this fairly often. You might, even in the weather, might hear the probability of rain today is 70%. That's the chance of it raining during the day. Pretty good chance, 70%. Um, so we're going to take a look at figuring out how we can calculate some probability. But we're only going to look at independent events in this course. And an independent event is, is when the outcome of one event has no effect on the outcome of another event. Okay, so the two events are completely independent. So let's consider two independent events. Let's say we are going to toss a coin. So we're going to flip a coin. And we know when we flip a coin that there are two outcomes. There could be heads. There could be tails. Two, two different um, outcomes there. On the dice, one, we got one die here. This is a six-sided die. You could get a one, you could get a two, you could get a three, a four, a five, or a six. These are all the outcomes, all the different possibilities of rolling a die. And I think we could say these are independent events because when I flip the coin and get either a heads or a tails, the result of this event is not going to affect whether I get a one, two, three, four, five, or six on the die. So these are independent events. So one of the ways we could um, help us find probability of events occurring is to do a sample space. And basically what we're gonna do with the sample space is we're gonna list all of the possibilities if we flip this coin and then roll that die. And one of the ways that we could do this fairly easily is to do a tree diagram. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip this coin and as we mentioned before one of the outcomes we could get is a heads okay so i could flip that coin and i could get a heads then after i flip the coin and get a heads i would then start to roll the die and what could i get well i could get a one i could get a two i could get a three i could get a four i could get a five or I could get a six. So I could get heads and a one. Let's write these over here. These would be like the outcome. This is the result. So I could get heads comma one, or I could get heads comma two, or heads comma three, heads comma four, heads comma five, or heads comma six. So those would be the outcomes if I were to flip the coin and get a heads, and then roll the die. But of course, I could flip the coin and get tails. And if I got tails, I could then roll the die and get a one. I could get a two, three, four, five, or six. And you can see kind of why they call this a tree diagram, because it kind of looks like branches of a tree. Got heads and then one, two, three, four, five, six, or we could have tails and one, two, three, four, five, six. So list continuing with my outcomes over here. I could whoops. T for tails. I could have tails and a one. I could get tails and a two. I could get tails and a three, tails and a four, tails and a five, or tails and a six. So these would be all the different outcomes, all the possibilities that you could get if you flipped a coin, either get heads or tails, and then you roll the die. And you either get one, two, three, four, five, or six. So, how many outcomes do we have here? Well, there's six here and six here. So, the total number of outcomes are 12. There's 12 outcomes here, 12 different possibilities, 12 outcomes. And now, in order to figure out the probability, let's say we wanted to find, let's say we wanted to find what is the probability of rolling sorry flipping the coin and getting a heads and then rolling the die and getting an even number so this is kind of how we would write this nice short way of writing it p for probability and then a bracket and then this is what we want we want a heads and we want an even number well let's go through our list of outcomes here because we have all the possibilities here and let's just circle the ones that are heads and an even number here's one that's heads and even. Here's heads and even. And here's heads and even. 
And I think those are our only possibilities here because these are all tails and these ones were heads, but they were odd. So we can now write this. The probability of getting heads and an even number is how many are there? There's three here out of 12. So the probability of getting a heads and an even number is 3 twelfths. We could re reduce this. So divide by 3, divide by 3, and get 1 quarter. So the probability of getting heads and an even number is 1 quarter. And then if we've learned how to convert fractions to decimals and 2%, so we could get a calculator out. This is not a particular hard one to do, but 1 fourth means 1 divided by 4, which is 0 0.25. And then we'd multiply that by 100, which of course just moves the decimal to the right two places, and we would get 25%. So when you flip a coin and roll a die, the chance of getting heads at an even number would be 25%. You'd expect to do that one out of every four times. So probability is really the number of outcomes you want divided by the total number of outcomes. So you can see in our previous um, example here, the number of outcomes we wanted was three. There were three favorable outcomes out of 12, a total of 12 in the sample space. So probability is the number of outcomes you want divided by the total number of outcomes. That's how we calculate probability. And we can write that as a fraction or as a, as a percent either way is is fine and then we've learned about what the sample space is it's just a list of all the possible outcomes so in this case the sample space represented all of these outcomes here and we determine these outcomes by using a tree diagram another way we can get to all the outcomes is to use a table so let's look at this example let's say we've got two things we're going to do here we're going to spin this spinner so we'll give this little arrow a flick and the thing would spin around here, and it would either end up as a, at a one, two, three, or a four. And then we're gonna roll the die. And again, we've got a six-sided die here. So what we can do is we could do a, um, a table. We'd have our die result, one, two, three, four, five, or a six along the top. And then along the side, we've got our spinner result, one, two, three, four. So what we can do here is we could say, okay, if we spun a one, so in our spinner, if we got a one, then, whoops, we could roll the die and get a one, or we could roll the die and get a two, or we could roll the die and get a three, a four, a five, or a six. So this, this in here represents the outcomes if we got a, a one on the spinner, and then either a one, two, three, four, five, or six on the die. Or we could spin the spinner and get a 2, and then roll the die and get a 1, get a 2, 2, two get a 2, 3, whoops, get a 2, 4, get a 2, 5, or get a 2, 6, and so on. We could spin the spinner and get a 3, and then roll the die and get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6, whoops, and finally, spin the spinner and get a four and then roll the die and get a one a two a three a four a five or a six okay so then um everything in this table here in our little box in here would represent our outcomes and so you can see there's four eight twelve sixteen twenty there would be 24 outcomes. And let's just say we wanted to find, let's do this question. Let's say we want to find the probability of getting a sum. So we're going to add these two numbers together greater than, oops, greater than, uh, let's say greater than seven. We want to find the probability of some greater than seven. Well, we have all our outcomes, so all we've got to do is look at these and say which ones are greater than seven. 
Well, none of them in this column because this the maximum down here would be five. The maximum down here would be six. Here's six. Oh, here's finally one that's, uh, oh, sorry, it said greater than seven. Seven is not greater than seven, so that one's actually no good. Uh, that'd be five, six, seven. Here's our first one that's greater than seven. That would be eight. And, oh, here's another one that's greater than seven. And another one greater than seven. That would be eight. That'd be nine. Here's another eight. Here's a nine. And here's a ten. So the probability that we would get a sum greater than seven is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six favorable outcomes out of a total of 24. So there's our probability, the number that we want, number of favorable outcomes. We, there's six here that are greater than seven. And that's what we're looking for out of the total of 24. And look at this. When we reduce this, is back to a quarter again. And 1 divided by 4 is 0.25, which we multiply by 100 and get 25%. So let's just summarize. So probability is the chance of something happening. We can always find probability by taking the number of events that, that we want, or the number of outcomes rather, that we want, divided by the total number of outcomes. And we can either write that as a fraction or we can write that as a percent. And we can either, we can show our sample space by using a table, or we can show our sample space by using a tree diagram. So that's how, one of the ways that we can find probability um, by listing the sample space and figuring out how many outcomes are there that we want and divide that by the total number of outcomes.